everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, and today I thought we'd be doing something spooky for this video. And then we're really going to be talking about all my film books and horror that I want to read this summer. Let's get going. I have been a few horror books this month and last month. Some were hits and misses, and um, so I'm excited to see what other books I have in store to read. So yeah, so let so let's get going. So my first book is The Haunting of Alejandra by V. Castro, and it is a woman is haunted by Mexican folk demon La Llorona as she unravels the dark secrets of her family history. In her family history, Alejandra no longer knows who she is. To her husband, she is a wife, and to her children, a mother. To her own adoptive mother, she is daughter. But they cannot see who Alejandra has become, a woman struggling with the darkness that threatens to consume her. Nor can they see what Alejandra sees. In times of despair, a ghostly vision appears to her, the apparition of a crying woman in a ragged white gown. When Alejandra visits a therapist, she begins exploring her family's history, starting with the biological mother she never knew. As she goes deeper into the lives of the woman and her family, she learns the heartbreaking tragedy are not the only things she has in common with her ancestors. Because the crying woman was with them too, she is La Llorona, the vengeful and murderous mother of Mexican legend, and she will not leave until Alejandra follows her mother, her grandmother, and all the women she came, who came before her into the darkness. So I have actually heard about La Llorona, and if you're not, if you're not familiar with La Llorona, she is Mexican legend or urban legend, I guess. And basically, she is, she has drowned her kids into the river because I think her husband was paying way more attention to her children than to the wife. So she got jealous and she drowned her two kids, and because of that, she is not allowed to go to the heaven until she finds her children to this day. So, if you ever hear a crying woman, run away. So, that is basically the story of La Llorona, and I'm really excited to hear about this book. And my next book is The Missing Hours by Julia Dell. From a distance, Cla Claudia Castro has it all. A famous family I trust from thousands of Instagram followers and a spot in NYU's freshman class. But look closer, and things are messier. Her parents are separating, she's just been humiliated by a sleazy documentary, and her sister is about to have a baby with the man she barely knows. Claudia starts the school year resolved to find a path towards something positive, maybe even meaningful, and in one drunken night, everything changes. Reeling her, mem her memory lazing, Claudia cuts herself off from her family, seeking solace and a new friendship. But when the rest of school comes back from spring break, Claudia is missing. Suddenly, the whole city is trying to piece together the hours of that terrible night. And my next book is These Silent Ones by Kimmy Cunning Cunningham Grant. No electricity, no family, no connection to the outside world. For eight years, Cooper and his young daughter Finch have lived in isolation in a remote cabin in the northern Appalachian woods, and that's exactly the way Cooper wants it, because he's got a lot to hide. Finch has been raised on the books, filling the cabin shelves, and the beautiful but brutal code of life in the wilderness, but she's starting to push back against the sheltered life Cooper has created for her, and he's still haunted by the painful truth of what it took to get them there. The only people who know they exist are a mysterious local hermit named Scotland and Cooper's old friend Jake, who visits each other to bring them food and supplies. But this year, Jake doesn't show up, and setting off an irreversible chain of events that reveals just how precarious their situation really is. Suddenly, the boundaries of their safe heaven have blood, and when a stranger wanders into the woods, Finch's growing obsession with her could put them all in danger. After a shocking disappearance threatens to pen the only life Finch has ever known, Cooper is forced to decide whether to keep hiding or finally face the sins of the past. The next book is The Stranger in the Mirror by Liv Constantine. 
Alice is about to get married, but she's not looking forward to the big day. It's not her fiancé, he's a wonderful man. It's because Addison doesn't know who she really is. A few years ago, a kind driver found her bleeding next to, her, next to a New Jersey highway and res rescued her. While her physical wounds healed, Addison memories never returned. She doesn't know her real name or how she ended up injured on the side of the road, or why she can't shake the notion that she may have done something very, very bad. My next book is Dark and Shallow Lies by Jeannie Mayerstein. A teen, a teen girl disappears from a small town deep in the bayou where magic festers beneath the surface of the swamp, like water rot in the La Lachette, Louisiana. It's the worst place to be if you have something to hide. This tiny town where 17 year old Gray spends her summers is a self proclaimed psychic capital of the world and the place where Aurora and Pilarine, Gray's best friend, disappeared six months earlier. Gray can't believe that Aurora vanished into thin air any more than she can believe that nobody in a town full of psych psychics knows what happened. But as she digs into the night that Alola went missing, she begins to realize that everybody in town is hiding something. Her grandmother, honey, her childhood crush, heart, and even her late mother whose secrets continue to call to Grey from beyond the grave. My next book is The Cop's Creed by Heather Hardman. Soon after her best friend Kitty mysteriously dies, orphan 70-year-old Molly Green is sent away to live with her aunt. With no relations that she knows of, Molly assumes she has been sold as fleeing domestic labor for the price of an extra donation in the church, orphanage coffers. Such a thing is not unheard of. There are only so many options for an unmarried girl in 1850s Philadelphia. Only when Molly arrives, she discovers her aunt is very much real, exceedingly wealthy, and with secrets of her own, secrets and what she intends to share for a prize. Next book is Don't Tell a Soul by Kirsten Miller. People say the house is cursed and preys on the weakest and young women are its favorite victims. In Luke, they are called the Dead Girls. All Brad wanted to do was to disappear from her own life, her family's past, and from the scandal that continues to haunt her. The only place left to go is Luke, the tiny town on the Hudson River where her uncle James has been renovating an old mansion. But James is haunted by his own ghost. Months earlier, his beloved, his wife, died in a fire that people say was set by her daughter. The tragedy left James a shell of the man Bram knew and destroyed half the house he had so lovingly restored. The manor is creepy and so are the locals. The people of Luth don't want outsiders like Bram in the town and with each passing day she discovered that the rumors they spread are just as disturbing as the secrets they hide. Most frightening of all are the legends they tell about the dead girls. Girls who live so cut short in the very house Bram now calls home. That is creepy, huh? And I'm sorry if the like the weather's kinda of changing the light. We're gonna have some more rain today, so it's a perfect video for all of these thrillers I want to read, right? The next book is Our Last Echoes by K. Alice Marshall. Sophia's first memory is of drowning. She remembers the darkness of the water and the burning, burning taste as it fills her throat. She remembers the cold shock of going under. She remembers her mother pulling her to safety before disappearing forever. But Sophia has never been in the ocean and her mother died years ago in a hospital, or so she has been told her whole life. A series of clues have led Sophia to the island of Bitter Rock, Alaska, where she talked her way into a summer internship of, at the Atlanta Avian Research Center, the same center her mother worked at before she not, died. There, she meets a disarmingly clever lady whose own mother runs the lock, L-A-R-C, as well as Abby, who follows from following a mystery of her own, a series of unexplained disappearances. People have been vanishing from Bitter Rock for decades, leaving only the ghostly echoes behind. When it looks like the two mysteries might be one and the same, Sophia vows to dig up the truth, no matter how many lies she has to tell along the way, even if it leads her to a truth that she may not want to face.
And my next mark is the Burning by Melissa Gray. Ten years ago, disaster struck the remote town of Indigo Falls. A horrific event drove the residents underground into shelters that kept them safe from the danger on the surface. No one speaks about what happened that fateful day, but even the youngest still remember the fear and most of all the searing pain when sunlight touched the skin. Now, a handful of families inhabit this bunker together, guided by a charismatic leader named Dr. Morgan Moran. They know many rulers Dr. Moran has instilled to govern life the long ground. You must always tell the truth. You must avoid the light of the sun. You must never touch skin to skin. My next book is John of Fox by Jennifer Hilda. When she was 16 years old, Angela, Angela Wong, one of the most popular girls in school, disappeared without a trace. Nobody ever suspected that her best friend, Georgina Shaw, now an ex executive and rising star at her Seattle pharmaceutical company, was involved in any way. Simply not Kezia Brody, who was close with both girls back in high school. But 14 years later, Angela Wong's remains are discovered in the woods near Gail's childhood home. In case a now detective in Seattle PD finally learns the truth, Angela was a victim of Calvin James, the same Calvin James who murdered at least three other women. To the authorities, Calvin is a serial killer, but in jail, he is something else entirely. Back in high school, Calvin was Gio's first love, turbulent and often violent. Vi volatile, this relationship brought on, on exception from the moment they met right up until the night Angela was killed. For 14 years, Gary knew what happened to Angela and told no one. For 14 years, she carried the secret of Angela's death until Gary was arrested and sent to prison. And my next book is The Lighthouse Ranges by C.J. Cook. Uh, two sisters go missing on a remote Scottish island. Twenty years later, one is found, but she's still the same age as when she disappeared. The secrets of witches have reached across the centuries. That kind of reminds me of the Romanian Haunted Forest, uh, Ohio Badger, I think that's how you say it. So it kind of reminds me of the same uh, story, because there's this girl who supposedly disappeared, and some time years later she, she appears wearing the same thing that she had worn all those years ago. So that kind of reminds me of that. When single mother Liv is commissioned to paint a mural in a hundred year old lighthouse on a remote Scottish island, it's an opportunity, opportunity to start over with her three daughters, Luna, Sapphire, and Clover. When two of her daughters go missing, she's frantic. She learns that the cave beneath the lighthouse was once a prison for women accused of witchcraft. The locusts warn her about wildlings. Supernatural beings to mimic human children created by witches for revenge. Liv is told wide links are dangerous and must be killed. And my next book is The Summoning by J.B. Smith. When it comes to contacting the dead, it's easy to go a step too far. Every year as an anniversary of 9-11 inches closer to the calendar, Kid Capital scans the memorials published in the New York Times. It's a simple thing to look up a name and phone number to reach out to surviving family members who might still be yearning for connection with their loved, loved ones to offer assistance. After her husband went down in the North Tower, Kit scraped by as an actress, barely supporting herself and her daughter, but now Zoe is in the hospital. Bills are due and the acting work has dried up. Becoming a medium is almost too easy for someone used to pretending for a living, and desperate clients are hard to come by. And my next one is Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power, and she is the author of An Guarding Burning Gold, which I have read and I did not like it. So maybe this book will be better. Ever since Margaret was born, it's been just her and her mother. No one answers to Margaret's questions about what came before, no history to hold on to, no relative to speak of, just the two of them stuck in the rundown apartment struggling to get along. But that's not enough for Margot. She wants family, she wants a past, and she just found a key she needs to get it. A photograph pointing her to a town called Fallon, pointing her home, 
All in my Margaret Gaster and Snow Machine Bargain Spore. My next book is The Bitter White Oath by Hannah West. Every 50 years, a cop claims 12 men to a murder in a small Texas town. Can one go in the cycle of violence and save the boy who broke her heart? San Solano, Texas is a quaint town known for its charm, hospitality, and history of murder. Twice now, 12 men have been brutally killed and no one knows who did it. A shadowy witch, a copycat killer, or a man-hating murderers. 18-year-old Natalie Coulter is sure that the rumors about her great-great-grandmother's cult of wild woman are just gossip. But that doesn't stop the true crime writers and dark tourism bloggers from catapulizing on a town's reputation. It's an urban legend that's hard to ignore and it gets harder when that learns that the sisterhood is real and magical and they want her to join. And my next book is The Christmas Murderer Game, Alexandra and Benedict. I know, how can a happy holiday like Christmas be murderer? Let me tell you. Twelve clues, twelve keys, twelve days of Christmas, but who will survive until twelfth night? Lily Armitage never intended to return to Endgame House, the grand family home where her mother died 21 Christmases ago, until she receives a letter from her aunt, asking her to return to take part in the annual tradition, the Christmas game. The challenge? Solve 12 clues to find 12 keys. The prize? The deeds to the manor house. Lily has no desire to win the house, but her aunt makes one promise. The clues will also reveal who really killed Lily's mother all those years ago. So this is also a book I have talked about. It's called The Midnight Game by Cynthia Murphy. Rules of the Midnight Game. Do not turn on the lights. Do not go to sleep. Do not leave the building. When a group of who have met on a creepy dead and friend decided to meet in real life, you only have one plan in mind. They're going to summon the Midnight Man. And once you start the minute game, you must finish it. There's no other way out. Six strangers, one night, but how many survivors? So the whole point of that game is basically to finish until 3.33 a.m. Right on the dot. You cannot turn on lights, as I said. And if you have to quit, you have to draw it like a, a salt of circle, like have a circle of salt. And you have to stay in that circle until 3.33 a.m. Otherwise, you have to continue the game until that time. From midnight, hence the why it's called Midnight Man, until 3.33 a.m. So, it is, it is actually a 3 a.m. game, and I kind of want to try it out. Kind of. We will see. But, um, so, anyways, so it's The Body in the Garden by Catherine Shellingman, and this is the first book in Lily Elder Mystery Number 1. London, 1815, though newly widowed Ellie Aldo is returning to a society that founds on independent women, she is determined to create a meaningful life for herself, even without a, a husband. She is no stranger to the glittering world of London's upper crust, and a ball thrown by her oldest friend, Lady Walter, she expects a scandal, gossip, and secrets. What she doesn't expect is a dead body in Lady Walter's garden. And that will be it for my thrillers. I know, it's a great way to end my video. <laughs> I did not plan this, I promise. But let me know what your thriller books are and have you read most of these books. Otherwise, please like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one.